It is a common experience of we humans that our lives many times, when they are not focused, when we lack wakefulness, when we lack paying attention. How many of you ever gone through a day on automatic pilot? Let's be honest, gang, it happens more often than not. It just does. You wake up, you do what you do. I mean, I am so programmed that if something throws me off in the morning of my routine, I'm completely bum-fuzzled. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm lost. What do I do next? This didn't fall. If the, if, if the coffee maker isn't operating, I'm in real trouble. So it's interesting to me that life on automatic pilot can tend to lead us toward a life lived without direction or purpose. Friends, there is a natural and unavoidable reality to that kind of living. And that is a life that is based and motivated primarily by fear. I'm afraid this might happen. I'm afraid that won't happen. I'm afraid this person will say something. I'm afraid that person won't say something. I'm afraid I won't get this promotion. I'm afraid I won't be able to pay my bills. I'm afraid my relationships are in trouble. I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. I confess to you, I have been on that side of living before where you're afraid of everything. There was a particular dark time in my own life when I was afraid to even wake up because it was such a very difficult and a very hard time in my life many years ago. But fear is an interesting thing because fear freezes you. When I was a boy, we uh, had uh, a friend of ours had a, mini, uh, a little mini bike. Little motorized bike, you know, it just, it was just, just this little motorized bike, and we were all taking turns riding it. Well, I was taking my turn riding it, and we were going down this slope of hill that we, we were in the, an apartment complex, and we were going down this, this gently sloped hill and then turning around and coming back up. Well, at the bottom of the hill was a line of parked cars. We were in an apartment complex, there were parked cars there. Well, it was my turn, and I had not really done anything like that. I mean, I'd ridden a, motor, uh, I'd ridden a, a, a bicycle and could pedal a bicycle and all that kind of stuff. But when I got on that mini bike and I started going gently down that hill, it wasn't a steep hill, it wasn't anything like this, it wasn't going really fast. But I saw those line of cars coming toward me, and I froze. I didn't know what to do. I mean, I knew what to do. You're supposed to turn the handles and you'll turn, make a curve and come back up the hill and give the kid the next chance. Brain went on a vacation. I was afraid. I didn't know what was going to happen. And sure enough, not at a fast speed, just a bare bump, but I ran right into a parked car. Because <laughs> that's what fear does. Fear freezes you. Fear keeps you from being able to make choices. The fact of the matter is, the difference between successful people and not, and not successful people isn't that somebody had money, another person didn't. Somebody had an education, another person didn't. The difference is always in, even in my own life, between successful times and times of failure is the difference between having, being, being gripped by fear or being courageous. But fear, as the great Herbert wrote in the, his wonderful book, uh, his wonderful book series called Dune, fear is the mind killer. Fear will kill you. Look at our disciples this morning. Where are they after the Lord had, had risen from the dead? It was in the evening, on the first day of the week, the Lord had risen from the dead. They'd heard the stories. But as yet he had not appeared to them. And where were they? They were all together except for Thomas. He was away. See what happens when you miss church? I'm just saying. They were all together. Where were they? They were all together in a locked room. Why? For fear of the Jews. 
And Jesus appeared in their midst and said to them, Irini Pasi, peace be with you. I want you to notice something about this very powerful image that we see here today. Fear had the disciples cowering behind a locked door. What kind of power did that locked door had have on Christ who had no fear? It was nothing. You see, that's always the difference between fear and the faith in Jesus Christ. Between fear and faith is always the difference between being barred by a locked door or having no barriers at all in your life. You're free. That's the difference. The disciples were in fear. And when they saw the Lord, the Scripture says they were glad. And Jesus says again, Irini Pasi, peace be with you. Now that always confused me. Why did he think they missed it the first time? No. There's a real powerful reason why the Lord said to them again, peace be with you. Because they went from being afraid to being glad. And there is always a danger in the twin delusions of despondency and elation. Have you ever been blindsided by life? Everything is going great. Everything is wonderful. Everything's rocking along fine. You got a good day going on. A cup of coffee was good this morning. Uh, the, traffic was, the traffic was light. You hit all the red lights green. And things are going great. And then all of a sudden, bam, right out of the blue, not even expecting it, life throws you a curve and you're knocked down. You see, ladies and gentlemen, there is also a danger in the times of elation or good times in our lives that can lead us to the twin delusion of elation to the point of not paying attention to our lives. What did we say earlier? It is in living life on automatic pilot that catches me. So the disciples were afraid at first and they were barred behind a locked door. But now they're elated and Jesus reminds them, peace be with you again. Avoid the twin delusions of despondency or elation. Because both of them will take you to places of illusion where life will catch you by surprise. So what is the answer? What is the answer to fear? Is the answer to fear courage? No. Is the answer to avoiding the despondency or the, the, the illusion of elation, to pay attention to my life even when things are going good, to not let up on my prayer rule even when things are going good in my life, to not forget my scripture study, to not forget my times of worship, my times of prayer, my devotion to Christ, even when things are going great, not falling into that trap of using God as my uh, heavenly butler when things are going bad. Oh, Father, will you come get me? I'm in real trouble. Please come help me. Sometimes the only time people pray is when they're in trouble. You ever wonder why you have so much trouble? Maybe God's trying to get you to pray. I'm just saying. So what's the answer? What's the answer to fear and elation? The answer to fear and elation isn't more courage or more education or more money or anything like that. The answer to fear and, and, the, and the illusion of elation is peace. Not courage. Not daring, not boldness, but peace. Jesus, before he dies, says to the disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives it, give I unto you. My peace I leave with you. Peace, dear precious brothers and sisters, is the one characteristic of a true follower of Jesus Christ that no matter what life is throwing at them, they're awake. They are not blinded by fear. They are not deluded by elation. They are awake all the time because they are at peace. But be careful. This is not a peace that sits down. This is not a peace that says, well, we're just going to sit quietly in a corner someplace and contemplate our navels or think wonderful and great thoughts about God and Jesus. And wouldn't that be fantastic? No. 
This is peace at work, folks. Look what he says. Jesus looks at them and says, after the second time, peace be with you. Just as my Father sent me, I send you. This is not peace sitting around on its thumbs and twiddling its thumbs. This is peace going to work. This is a peace that doesn't allow the fear of doing or accomplishing to keep you from getting going in your life. This is a peace that doesn't allow you to take a vacation because seems th things seem to be going great, so I'm just going to lay back a little bit. Now, now and again, you need a break. Trust me, I know. But this peace that Jesus gives us isn't a peace that leaves us alone. This is a peace that puts us to work. Just as the Father sent me, so I send you. And then Jesus does something bizarre. As usual. He blows in their face. Every time I do a baptism, I love doing that because the kid gets. Uh. He breathes on them and he says, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anybody's sins, they're forgiven. If you retain anybody's sins, they are retained. Jesus gives them the way to have the peace that he's talking about that sets them free from fear and the delusion of elation by telling them, if you want this kind of peace, you have to receive the Holy Spirit. And to receive anything, folks, you've got to be open to it. To receive anything, you've got to be open to what God is speaking to you to how the Lord has preserved in his church 20 centuries of reliable wisdom to train you how to be the man or the woman that God has called you to be. You have to be willing to receive this gift if you're ever going to possess it. And it's not just a one-time thing. When I was a Protestant, we'd say our magic little prayer, our, our salvation prayer, and poof, we were saved. It was cool. Three seconds before I uttered the words, I was going to bust hell wide open. Three seconds after I finished those words, we're done. Yay. It was great. It was also very disconcerting to me when I kept falling down over and over again after I said the magic words. What's the deal? Little did I know I needed the 20 centuries of continuity with the church to build in a lifestyle of faithfulness of constantly receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. Never stop being open. Never stop saying yes. Never stop making myself available to the work of God in my life. But constantly over and over and over again, sometimes even moment by moment, saying yes to the Spirit of God coming to me and saying to me clearly, peace be with you. Now go. On this Mother's Day, on this day of St. Thomas, in a world where it's easy to doubt, easy to be afraid, easy to be distracted, easy to fall into the easy life of life on automatic pilot. Only the person willing to receive will have peace that can't, that life can't shake no matter what it throws at you. I don't know about you, but now I'm beginning to understand why the church calls this good news. Good news. 